sort of how did you get into casting in the first place because that's not something that like you're growing up hey i want to be an esports caster it's like not really a thing so what sort of like sparked your interest in that and then how did you sort of get in get into that and then like where you are where you are now well i was that's a good question actually i for, <laughs> i think i got into it because i was one of the only custom scenario players that was willing to do it um we were having tournaments and we wanted you know we wanted people to watch instead of just uh the hundred of us custom scenario experts that were there um watching each other watching recorded games we wanted people to be able to enjoy and we wanted you know the broadcast with a commentator over it that knew what they were talking about so that in years to come we can go back and, and reference that or you know if you're mm -hmm. um drunk on a saturday and you get home from the bar and you want to watch your highlights from you know <laughs> four years ago which i uh, don't lie every age of empires player that's ever been in a tournament you've done that before don't lie i know you have um <laughs> and uh so i got into it and um you know like like most things if you're halfway good at something and you get positive reinforcement from people telling you you're good at something, then you're more likely to invest, you know, you're more likely to invest time to get better at it. And I found that I really enjoyed it. Uh, I had positive feedback. So I kept commentating on custom scenario uh, events. I made my own YouTube channel um, and uploaded videos very, very rarely, but um, still kind of practicing that content. Um, and then I got into the random map scene in 2014, 2015 with a tournament called War is Coming. Mm -hmm. And I got really into that. Like I, I dove from not, basically not knowing anything about random map or the competitive scene at all to like following every player within a few months. And um, <clears throat> because I was already affiliated with that Vubli official team doing custom scenario events, I kind of shifted over to do random map events at which point I met up with um, T90, who had maybe, you know, under 100 followers on his channel. Mm -hmm. And we found out that we meshed pretty well together. And since then, it was like every big event that he was casting, I, I was part of it. So real quick, for my own understanding and misuse of the term earlier, what is custom scenarios in your, in like, what is it? So custom scenarios, basically you can, you can make through the editor, you can make any, any kind of map that you want within limits. Right. And mm -hmm. people made some really, really interesting and competitive maps early on, uh, in MSN gaming zone. And we had four dedicated custom scenario lobbies and they were always full, always full on the zone. Uh, 300 people per lobby so it's a decent you know decent player base mm -hmm. and like with anything it gets competitive and you figure out better ways to you know beat your enemy or play the maps and new maps are constantly being developed so it was like its own little scene unto itself that mm -hmm. a lot of the the mainstream of our community weren't familiar with um and I, like I said before, I got competitive in that. All the top custom scenario players know each other just at like all the top RM players know each other. And uh, yeah, it's it's really hard to explain if you don't have experience watching it. Like I can't mm. explain individual maps yeah. or, you know, how we choose our settings or anything like that. But just know sure. that it was, it was very competitive to us. Um, and it was just kind of like a micro version of what we see today in the random map competitive scene. Gotcha. So how is that different then from like how there's new new maps released for Hidden Cup? Or is that kind of very a, different. An very different. So what's very. the difference then? Because I think Tristan was talking about how he's working with the map team to create new maps and and that sort of thing. So were, were you guys doing like crazy wacky stuff with yours or can you kind of go into the difference a little bit? Um, custom scenario, you wouldn't really have an economy. So like most of the maps, it would be, um, let's say each person has a base, right? Mm -hmm. You have a building that if, if the building dies, you die. 
So mm -hmm. kind of like a sudden death kind of thing. And then you have um, units at the back of your base. If you put the unit on the flag, it creates 40 of that unit. And there's like gotcha. 10 different units you can create. If you get raisings, you upgrade stuff. Like it's completely different. Absolutely gotcha. completely different from our competitive scene right now. The maps that they're creating mm -hmm. um, and that they're talking about is scripting. So they'll script something for random map generation. So let's say they script a new Arabia version. Um, you're still going to have a main gold and two secondary golds. Uh, but if they change the scripting a little bit, suddenly your main goal could vary five tiles farther outside of your TC. Mm -hmm. Or you could have an extra mm -hmm. wood line. Or your sheep could be closer to your, your starting town center, right? So um, they're doing the random elements. Our maps were very... Uh, like, they were always the same. They'd, they'd never change. Um, unless we made an edit, and then you'd have to re-download that edit. Gotcha. They'd be stagnant, stagnant every single time. Gotcha. That makes sense. One thing you also mentioned was that you meshed well with Tristan. That was something I was going to ask you about um, at some point. But did you guys, was that uh, like the chemistry was there from, from the get-go? Or because when I watch you guys cast now, or when I watch the games now, the chemistry you guys have is is remarkable, obviously, given that you've been doing it together for a while. But it, was it was it always like that, or were there some growing pains with with that? Oh, there's there was growing pains for sure. Mostly mostly on his end, I'll say. <laughs> I like to think that i I've been a positive social influence on uh, on T90. He was. Uh, I, I think he would agree with me if I said that he was a bit awkward at, throughout the first few years. Um, but he loosened up over time and you know we get a we get a feel for each other mm -hmm. uh, just like anyone that you cast with you know it's going to be difficult the first few times but we've done so many events like probably hundreds if not thousands of events and i know we've done thousands of games mm -hmm. um and thousands of sets so it's it really really builds up and by the time we get to like a finals of hidden cup four it's i'm basically on autopilot um, yeah, if I'm in the booth with Tristan, so 